David Rocco, our guest, his new book called Made in Italy. And you've been truffle hunting, haven't you? I suspect. Uh, I have uh, been truffle hunting uh, mm -hmm. a few times. Really? Yes. What is a truffle exactly? A truffle is a um, uh, fungus, fungus uh, mushroom uh, that grows uh, um, in the ground. Right. And it's um, the Italians call it white diamonds because uh, there's black and white, but the white ones are expensive and uh, extremely um, uh, well, expensive and rare. And uh, they used to hunt truffles with pigs, but the pigs were very smart and they would eat the truffles. So now you go hunting with truffle uh, dogs or right. dogs. And yeah. is there an area of Italy where the truffles are really good? In Alba and, uh, you know, there's uh, in, in the... Spoleto? For, yeah, Spoleto as well. Spoleto. In Umbria, yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in uh, Umbria and uh, Tuscany are you know, two areas. Okay. Now, I know you're uh, about not measuring ingredients mm -hmm. so much, but you're about ingredients. Absolutely. And your lovely assistant, while you were on the airplane, <laughs> supplied us with ingredients. Yes. Well, it's interesting because I say that this is not cooking. It's assembly of good ingredients. You take, for example, a carpaccio, uh, a carpaccio di brasaula, which is um, a cured beef, and uh, I call it my lazy man's carpaccio. I put it in a dish, I have some rocket, rucolo, lay in the carpaccio, some uh, shavings of parmigiano, mm. good olive oil, some uh, lemon, mm. and it's done. And people say, oh my God, this is so good. How did you make it? I didn't make it. I just, uh, I just laid it on a dish. <laughs> right. And, and it it's is, pretty. It's pretty. It's beautiful. And mm -hmm. you don't have to stress when people come over. So a little green stuff, the arugula. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, nice pepperiness. The, mm -hmm. the uh, brazala is delicious. You know, shavings of, of parmigiano, really good olive oil, and uh, some salt and some lemon. So when you the Simply Italian Man, uh -huh. uh, talk about really good olive oil, right. what do you mean? Well, I always have two uh, types of olive oil. So I have my workhorse olive oil, which is mm. for frying and sauteing, and you know, because it can get really expensive, the really good stuff. Sure. And then I have my, the best money I can afford, I can buy olive oil. Right. And that usually comes from, um, uh, you know, the, the guys that make the good wine, like the Frescobaldi's, the Antoniori's, the uh, Rufino's, and you can go to a, a wine shop, and um, it's olive oil that I use to drizzle. So I call it my natural mm. MSG. I uh. mean, it's so delicious, and it really mm. elevates a dish. And when you go to olive oil country, right. and they have the big harvest, mm -hmm. what's that like? It Take actually, you there. there's I a section. A it is wonderful, and there's a lot of you know, I have friends that are doctors, lawyers that mm. will take time off work to go pick olives and they will actually get paid in olive oil. So what's that called? On well, the day they have the big ol well, that's olive, the, olive oil um, harvest. Well, that's called la vendemia. It's, it's like the harvest. And so you will go and pick the olives. And I think 100 kilos of olives uh, yields about 12 mm. liters of olive oil. Mm. So that is, you know, a lot of work, yeah. and it is fantastic. And you know, one of the pleasures of seeing freshly pressed olive oil is grabbing your toasted bread and just dunking it into the oil. It, it's all wet, and you just eat it, and you're like dripping in olive oil, right. and it is, it's heaven. I'm sure. Well, it is my, so good. <laughs> my grandmother's best friend was Mrs. Gus Delonis. Ah, okay. And she used to make banya cotta. Uh -huh. Is that, and it was like, we dipped uh, veg yeah, in olive vegetables, oil. Yeah, vegetables, absolutely, in olive oil, and uh, that that is a way of really celebrating an ingredient that is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. So good olive oil. So I always have two olive oils. So, you know, a, a workhorse olive oil for sauteing and frying right. and all the rest of it. And okay. then a really, really good olive oil for drizzling. Right. And um, and then, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, the rest of the ingredients, uh, you know, I always have my pantry staples. Yes, uh, tomato sauce. Of course. A certain kind of tomato? Well, here's the thing. You buy tomato sauce, uh, in the, uh, sorry, not tomato sauce, you buy puree tomato. Uh, or uh, peel like plum. this, yeah, or peel molasana. Yeah, or, I mean it could be any brand. Italian right. brand's good, but this is just tomato puree. Okay. And or plum tomatoes, and so mm. you make your own sauce. You put a little bit of olive oil, some crushed garlic, so that that saute or onions. I call it my five-minute sauce. Okay. Okay. Then while that is browning, you add in your tomato puree or your peeled plum tomatoes. If you have kids, you want to get them involved. Let them use their hands, let them crush up the peeled plum tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Or you can do it to, you know, the mm -hmm. one's consistency that they like, if you like it a little chunkier. Right. Add it in, 
let it mm. come to a simmer, let it cook for mm. five minutes while your spaghetti is cooking, your sauce is being made, and you're eating in 15 minutes. Well, and the kids will eat it, they unlike uh, something it. like uh, yes. cold corn yes. octopus salad. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that, uh, you know what, my kids eat as well. I bet they do. <laughs> yeah, they, How old are those twins? Uh, they're three and a half. Yeah. And they eat octopus, they do? Well, you know, sometimes, I mean, they don't know what's octopus per se, right. but if you introduce them things, and again, I get them to mm. stir and I get them involved, sure. they absolutely will eat it. <laughs> so, I mean, lately they're getting a little funny, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those challenges sure. I think uh, any parent has. Well, you not only have a new book, you have a new baby. I have a new baby. Dante? And, uh, Dante, yeah. He was born actually two days after the launch of our book. I see. So I called it my second birth that week to my wife's mm -hmm. chagrin. She's like, second birth? I don't believe so. <laughs> I, I think that's your believe only me, birth. she's <laughs> right. She is right. Not but that you didn't have a part in I it. I did, absolutely. And, but what, I mean, you know, doing a cookbook was like giving birth. It was like seeing uh -huh. that kind of, uh -huh. you know, creation. It took nine months. And of course, you know, seeing my wife you know, pregnant and going through that and, and seeing sure. both. I mean, it was just Well, incredible. she travels with you. Is she, she a does. chef in her own right? She, I know she you can call handle, yourself an unchef. Yes, she can handle her own. I think, um, I mean, she is not as passionate as I am, mm. and uh, but she's a fantastic uh, cook. Absolutely. Okay, so when when you're at home who does on the, the Friday night, who does the cooking? <laughs> Lately, it's been our nanny. Oh, okay, <laughs> If you want to know the truth. That's yeah. why you're moving to Rosedale <laughs> in Toronto, isn't it? Well, it was really funny. A couple of weeks ago, I, I came back from New York, and I was exhausted, and it was a um, kind of mid-afternoon flight, and on the stove were, were these meatballs. And just like my mom did it, there was mm. like this, you know, bowl with meatballs and this lid with like a, uh, a tea napkin. And so I came, and just like when I was, you know, 12, I was like yeah. eating over the stove, and and I said to my wife, I said, oh, that's so good. I, was my mom here? And she, she said, no. And I said, well, was your mom here? And she said, no. I said, well, who made this? Because I knew it wasn't my wife. And uh, she said, oh, it was the nanny. <laughs> so, <laughs> and she nanny. goes, sir, I just got it off your, uh, off your cookbook. Sure, I just read the cookbook and all <laughs> yeah. of that. And you even have a grape pizza in here. Yes, it's it, is a it l'uva. And, and that's part of the Tuscan tradition uh, during the grape harvest. They put the Sangiovese grapes right okay. on the pizza. Really? Is it's it good? So good. Oh, is it good? It's fantastic. Is it good, she says. I know. <laughs> How do you say meatball? Me, uh, polpette. Polpette. Yeah. And what's the secret to a great meatball? It's all the flavor enhancers. So when you have your ground beef and, or pork or whatever mm -hmm. your, your f favorite uh, meat uh, choice is, you add parmigiano, some good olive oil, a little bit of breadcrumbs, um, some parsley, and eggs. Right. So those are your binders and flavor. Okay, and Good parmigiano is really important. I bet or it not is. good parmigiano reggiano. So that's the only thing you use. Parmigiano not the stuff reggiano, in the shaker. Not the stuff not in the, the shaker. <laughs> and you grate, grate, grate. Absolutely. When you need it, you grate it. Okay. And what about with the uh, uh, risotto? Ah, risotto. Yes. Or the risotto. Yes. Or the risotto. Risotto. Well, I say. I don't. Yeah. Know. No. You said it perfect. Absolutely. Um, well, there's a risotto is a basic kind of rice dish, and then you can add whatever you want. So in my book, I have a whole risotto section on mm -hmm. risotto bianco. And then if you want to add shrimp as an example, you can saute, saute those separately, and at the very end, you, you kind of mix them in. Okay, and uh, you use special rice. I think it's here. Um, I don't somewhere. think we have rice here, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we did. We just actually brought some simple ingredients. You know, right. Italian well, cooking is all... Beans. on. Yeah, it's all on the cucina and povera. Tuna. Yes. Got tuna yeah. and beans, yeah. but arborio rice you'd have to use, yes. right? Yes, arborio or, or, kind of rice. or cannaroli, it's Italian style risotto rice. Okay. Yeah. and So not mm -hmm. long grain. Right. And this <coughs> isn't all food because I noticed in the back there was a Negroni, my favorite <sighs> summer drink. Isn't it fantastic? Yes. Oh my God. It is, it is really special. It's really special. <laughs> yeah. It really is. All and my friends make fun of me. It's gin yeah. and Campari. Campari. And? Oh. Yeah. A oh, sweet vermouth. Very good. Yes. And my and friends ice. used to make fun and because they dog. go, Rocco, that's really cute, that little pink drink you're having. I'm like, well, here, no, try it. And it's like, really Whoa. good. It's refreshing. I yeah. know we, we're kind of hooked on gin and yeah. tonics in yeah. Canada, but yeah. the, a Negroni. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what's and also? A, a little bitters. Yes. Well, maybe. also what's very good is the Aperol, an Aperol spritz. So it's uh, uh, Aperol, a little Prosecco, and some soda. Ooh, and, you know, all to taste, all well, quanto basta. Quanto basta, and that way you don't fall <laughs> now, off the is dog. It, isn't that a good kind of, uh, you know, philosophy right. when well, you're you making drinks? Have, yes, because <laughs> you can have two of those. Yes. You can't have two, well, you, you can have two Negronis, not three, you're in the water. Yeah. <laughs> or in bed, <laughs> or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this uh, TV show you do. Yes. La Dolce Vita, Dolce yes. Vita, just yeah. Dolce Vita. Dolce Vita, David Rocco's Dolce Vita. Um, how many seasons? Uh, we've done four seasons. Uh, we just shot a new series called David Rocco's Amal. Getaway, 
comes in the Mulfi Coast. It was tough, yeah. and we've actually called I it, uh, oh, uh, no. our crew was affectionately calling it drag. David Roth is a Mulfi guy. Oh, yeah, drag. I wasn't in drag, it's such, and it wasn't a drag. It mm -hmm. was just a joke. It's such a drag having yeah. to go to the Mulfi yeah. Coast tough, and, you know, tough, visit tough, Sophia tough. Loren and yeah. <laughs> uh, drink the limoncello. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It must be terrible. Well, I tell you, you know, it, I, clearly, we do a decent job to show how, how fun it is, but uh -huh. it's hard work. As you know, television is... Oh, yeah. Hurry up and but, wait. Yeah. But I think what makes our job so wonderful is that we're in that crazy, dysfunctional country that serves right. the best food in the world and has some wonderful characters mm. and personalities. And then you go to Sicily, which is one of my favorite yeah, places. It's, it's, it's It still feels like the old it's country. It's rustic style. Yeah. And still. It, no, absolutely. You, it has still that old-style Italy that, mm. as I was mentioning, Florence lacks. Yeah. You know, Florence yeah. is kind of, you know, it's moved away from that Italian tradition that I think people go to Italy to see. Sure. Yeah. But you can still go to Florence if you have to. Well, hey, listen, there's some of the best art in the world in Florence. So no kidding. Nothing else. Yeah, and the Uffizi, isn't yeah, the Uffizi yeah, in yeah, Florence? Yeah, the Uffizi, absolutely. Yeah. And you can have an anchovy. Yeah, or you can have the bistec of Fiorentina. Yeah. Of course you can. Yes. <laughs> of course you can. And a little fine wine. And I bet you go to the vineyards. I do go to the vineyards. And, uh, you know, fall is wonderful in Italy. Between the olive harvest and okay. the grape harvest, it is just... So is that about the best time to I go, think, September, oh, October? Yeah. Do not go in June, July with, you know, no. it, it's way too hot. And the fall is magical. There's a lot of uh, food festivals and right. there's just that clean air of energy and uh, okay. you know most of the tourists go home and it's just a different kind of tourism that happens. All right, there. I'll be looking for you with Martha Stewart because <laughs> I know you're going on her show sometime. Yes. Maybe you've already been on our show, but we'll figure it out. Absolutely. Nice to see it's you. It's been so much fun. Thank hey, you. Hey, thank you.